Good Wednesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And after a lot of bright, beautiful sunshine this morning and mild temperatures, the clouds rolled in this afternoon. And this was a shot taken from our monitor SkyFi tower camera this afternoon. Looking down at Highway 2, you can see it in the middle of your screen, the Wenatchee River above that. And that snow is beginning to melt away. All the rain that we received yesterday and more rain mixed with snow is on the way. And that means tonight. And that also means you could see a, a pretty uh, travel uh, hazard tomorrow as you make your morning commute. Wasn't so bad uh, in the Wenatchee area, although school was delayed two hours this morning. Very slippery in East Wenatchee as well. And with the rain we expect tonight mixed with snow, it could be another slippery one as you make that commute tomorrow morning. And we have much more precipitation to tell you about in the next four or five days. And we'll do that coming up in your weather forecast. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Traffic on Blewett Pass was blocked for almost four hours late Tuesday and early this morning after a northbound driver attempted to pass a disabled semi near the summit, lost control and hit another semi. The woman who was arrested for the acts of vandalism against the Wenatchee Police Station was sentenced in court yesterday. And a new trial has been ordered in the case of a man who was convicted of murdering his mother's ex-boyfriend 10 years ago in East Wenatchee. But first we begin tonight. Eastmont High School lock was locked down for about an hour and a half this afternoon. And a student taken into custody after a social media post threatened a shooting at the school. The post on Twitter said, I want to shoot up Wenatchee High School and Eastmont High School, unquote. Wenatchee High School was not locked down, but there was increased security, said Assistant Superintendent John, De John DeJong. He said because it was an Eastmont student, they did not see an immediate threat to the Wenatchee School. Law enforcement was called to Eastmont shortly before 2 o'clock p.m. And by 2.20, the student was in custody and normal scheduling resumed. In other news, the Wenatchee Police Department uh, issued a rifle that was removed from a secure safe at Wenatchee High School earlier this year will now be returned to the school. The motion was made to return the school's resource officer's firearm and the board voted unanimously to return it at Tuesday night's school board meeting. Superintendent Brian Flonis ordered the weapon removed last January due to school board concerns. Following a letter to the school board requesting the gun be returned to the high school, Wenatchee Police Chief Steve Crown made his case. In a crisis like that, you want to have access. It doesn't mean that one of these implements are going to be used. You want access quickly and you can rapidly respond to the threat. We know that looking at all the incidences across the nation, that there is definite uh, factors in which rapid response reduces casualties and uh, other threats. So uh, that message has been pretty much voiced by, by everybody up here. Um, our goal is to improve safety. Uh, I request that uh, the rifle be put placed back in the, the high school. Wenatchee High School Principal Eric Anderson said the district's Parent Advisory Committee also overwhelmingly wanted the rifle returned to the school. And any time you talk about uh, a potential weapon being in the school, there's, there's definitely some concern around that. We understand that. And I think that the parents, after having the conversation and understanding the reasoning behind it, um, all said, we understand, although we don't like the thought of, it, of having to have it, um, you know, when you think back 10, 15, 20 years ago, this probably would never have been a conversation, but knowing that that's not our reality, our reality is much different than it, is, uh, than it was 20 years ago, they understand that and they were, in essence, unanimously behind the idea of saying, we need to have that back there so that Mr. Renko, um, or whoever our next resource officer is in the future, would have access to that. Also at last night's board meeting, with tension definitely in the air, Sonny Hemphill was elected president and Laura Jakes was voted vice president. Hemphill was nominated by outgoing president Michelle Sandberg and seconded by Sarah Knox, while Laura Jakes nominated herself for board president but did not receive any support. 
Traffic on Blewett Pass was blocked for almost four hours late Tuesday and early Wednesday after a northbound driver attempted to pass a disabled semi near the summit, lost control and hit another semi. The driver of the semi that was hit had stopped to help the other trucker who was parked on the southbound shoulder. That according to the Washington State Patrol. 42-year-old John Angus of Seattle was driving a 2014 Toyota FJ Cruiser and was cited for driving too fast for conditions. Both his vehicle and the semi, which was driven by 41-year-old Travis Breckenridge of Waterville, had to be towed from the scene. The accident happened about 11.15 p.m. Well, do you remember these images from back in May showing damage to Wenatchee Police Department buildings and patrol cars? Well, the woman who was, arre was arrested for the acts of vandalism was sentenced in court yesterday to one year in prison. Brittany M. Watson pled guilty to second-degree malicious, malicious mischief after she smashed the windows at the former and current police stations and then broke the windows of a patrol vehicle that was parked in the police garage. Watson's motives were unclear. She reportedly pled guilty after a plea deal with prosecutors. Well, a new trial has been ordered in the case of a man who was convicted of murdering his mother's ex-boyfriend 10 years ago in East Wenatchee. Christopher Martin Owens received a new trial after he successfully appealed his first-degree murder conviction in 2011. It was based on his claim that his attorney failed to include key evidence. That verdict followed his first trial in 2009 that ended in a hung jury. Owens is accused in the December 23, 2008 shooting of Richard Tyler at Owens' mother's home. She had separated from Tyler, but he was killed when he returned to the home to collect some items. Owens claimed he shot the victim for fear he would harm his mother, who had also filed for a restraining order against Tyler. Owens' new trial in Douglas County Superior Court is scheduled to start on January 8th. He's currently in custody on $1 million bail. Coming up next, Confluence Health will be raising the minimum wage. It pays its employees to $15 an hour starting on January 4th. The 32 candidates for the 2019 Washington State Apple Blossom Festival Royalty have been announced. And the Wenatchee Area Chamber of Commerce heard an update this morning from area politicians on what to expect this legislative session. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Thanks to the help I received at Goodwill, I have a job. I'm looking now. Thanks to Goodwill. Thank you, Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Thank, Thank you, Goodwill. Goodwill. Goodwill's Employment Connection Center is a free walk-in job search assistance program designed to get you back to work. When you donate to or shop at Goodwill, you're really helping people find work. Thank you. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Sir, I pulled you over today to ask you one thing. Is it true that Apple Valley Honda has a free lifetime warranty on every new Honda? Officer, I'm glad you asked. Our lifetime warranty comes free on all of our new Hondas. That means you won't have to pay a dime for any major expenses. That could save you thousands. And another, and no, you do not have to service with us. It's a great peace of mind, officer. Wow, my wife and I have wanted the new Accord. We'll see you this weekend. Welcome back. In another news, Confluence Health will be raising the minimum wage it pays its employees to $15 an hour starting on January 4th. It will mean a pay raise for about 450 employees. Those workers currently are paid the state minimum wage of $11.50 an hour, which would have risen to $13 an hour in January. The new wage will be for full-time, part-time, and temporary employees. 
Confluence Health, which includes Central Washington Hospital in Wenatchee and numerous clinics throughout Central Washington, said it was the right thing to do for their employees. Chief Administrative Officer Jim Wood said, quote, We believe this investment in our people will be successful in both attracting and retaining talented team members, unquote. Well, the 32 candidates for the 2019 Washington State Apple Blossom Festival Royalty have been announced. Those competing include 20 young women from Wenatchee High School and 12 from Eastmont High School. Festival Administrator Darcy uh, Christofferson appeared with Dan Kuntz on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley this morning and explains what's next in the selection process for the new royalty. Uh, they do have their speech topics, so right now they are working on their speeches and then they will give their speeches to their student body on January 9th. And 50% of the vote is student body, and then the other 50% is out-of-town judges. And then we will announce our top 10, five from Eastmont and five from Wenatchee on the evening of January 9th at six o'clock. You usually broadcast yep, live we usually have that at that you. event. So um, we're real excited. I mean, it's so crazy. Yesterday I was looking at all of them. I'm like, oh my gosh, our 100th royalty is right here. Yeah. Our 100th royalty. The Wenatchee Chamber of Commerce heard an update this morning from area politicians on what to expect this next legislative session. Presenters included Senator Brad Hawkins, who discussed the Wenatchee Valley's transportation needs and a potential gas tax increase to fund them. Representative Mike Steele talked about his role in education and housing issues. And newly elected Representative Keith Gaynor was also on hand and talked about his experience in the county commission and how he hopes to bring those challenges to the state legislature in hopes of forming a better level of cooperation. Stay tuned to the NCW Life channel for more previews and full coverage of the coming session in Olympia, which begins on January 14th. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, serving North Central Washington, is proud to offer the finest heating and cooling air quality products along with prompt and professional customer service since 1984. Regardless of the temperature outside, Arctic is here for you. Arctic offers a variety of services, residential and commercial heating, air conditioning, commercial refrigeration, as well as planned fall and spring maintenance for the overall well-being of your system. Call Arctic Refrigeration and Heating for your heating and cooling needs. If you want to work in healthcare, choose the program that teaches the skills employers want. The Charter College Medical Assistant Program combines hands-on learning in the lab with convenient online learning, plus real-life experience with an externship. Classes start every five weeks, so you don't have to wait to launch your new career. Enroll with confidence, knowing Charter is institutionally accredited by the Accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools. And be ready to work in less than a year. Charter College. We work to get you to work. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, we continue our look at a series of anti-bullying films created by area students. With the help of New York filmmaker Mike Fierstein, the videos are part of the Don't Wait to Unmake a Bully project. Tonight, a film from the students at Eniat Middle School. Yeah. No, look, seriously. Cohen's alone again. I wonder if he's planning on going to the movies alone. He still doesn't have a girlfriend. It's not a surprise. I mean, I did see him in the hallway earlier holding his own hand. <laughs> Cohen's alone again. And he still doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to say something? Can you just 
stop. Whatever. Pizza boy. Gotta bulk up. Gotta get the girls' minds away from your face. To these bad boys. The muscles. Can't you get a girl? Order two extra large pizzas, one for your face. What's your problem? Why aren't you laughing? Yeah, come on, roast them back. I don't feel like it. Okay. Why are you so salty? Talking about salty? Your head's like the salt shaker with all that dandruff. Really, dude? That's how you got. Loser. Loser. At least I don't want down the whole school by missing that final free throw. Oh, and you, you're like a scoreboard. No point. That's probably why all your friends ignore you. Cohen took this way too serious. I mean, we were just trying to be funny. How are we supposed to know? Well, I did see him getting weird about it. I can't believe he said that. Well, he did ask us to stop. Well, then why didn't anyone do anything? He just kept going. When joking with friends, be aware of the different people and their personalities. Don't take it too far. Look for signs of uneasiness. Make sure you're not crossing any boundaries. Respect their decisions and don't pressure them into saying things they're not comfortable with. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. But before we get to those details, let's take a very interesting and beautiful look outside our weather window this afternoon. This is what it looked like earlier today looking from our monitor SkyFi tower camera. You can see Highway 2 traveling up to the Leavenworth area and of course the Wenatchee River above that. There was, well, there was more snow than this, but that rainfall that we received yesterday afternoon, last night, and a little bit even overnight, really diminished that snow level throughout at least the mid and upper valleys. Not much snow at all left here in the Wenatchee Valley. High temperatures today, boy, it was nice out there with that sunshine, wasn't it? We got all the way up to 43 degrees today. 32 is our normal high temperature. We were off to a good start, too, this morning at 30 for our low. But boy, it made it just slick enough out there to actually delay school uh, starting in Wenatchee for about two hours. Very slick. Then the sun came out. 24 is our normal overnight low temperature. Our record high on this date was in 1995 at 50 degrees. Our record low, 6 degrees back in 1972. We're at 6.42 inches of precipitation for the year. Picked up just three one hundredths of an inch after midnight this morning. Our sunrise was at 739 and the sun set this afternoon at 410. Now let's show you what you can expect and it's going to be a wet one folks as we move into tonight at 11 o'clock we will see cloudy skies. A good push of moisture from this area of low pressure that's up in northern British Columbia. We will see a 60 percent chance of rain mixed with snow overnight tonight as we transition into our Thursday morning. More of the same, a little less chance for that precip. You can st still see a bit wide area of blue with even some snowflakes mixed in from western Washington into central Washington. So a 50% chance for showers Thursday. A little bit quieter on Friday. We'll see mostly cloudy skies. Just a chance for maybe some scattered showers late in the evening. But then on Saturday, as this system pushes a little bit closer to us, that will go up to a 40% chance for rain mixed with snow at around 8 o'clock on Saturday. And then a gigantic storm system, and you can see it here, moves in on Sunday by 4 o'clock, an 80% chance of rain. And that is upgrade, updated from a, just a little bit a uh, while ago, mid-afternoon or so. So 80% chance of rain now on Sunday, and we're going to keep an 80% chance of rain also into Monday. This is at 11 o'clock at night, and I'm telling you folks, a huge area of low pressure will continue to move through, and we will remain wet past Monday on Tuesday and even into Wednesday. Let's take a check now of your quick lube and tune forecast. Tonight will drop down. We're going to stay on the mild side, 33 degrees for our overnight low. 
Tomorrow, there's that chance for rain and snow, a 40, uh, 42 for our high temperature. Keep in mind, most of that activity will be late in the day and tomorrow night. Maybe some lingering isolated showers on Friday morning, mostly cloudy and 40. And then the next round of storminess moves in, a 40% chance of rain and snow, partly cloudy skies on Saturday and 38 degrees. And even though it says 60% on Sunday and Monday, remember, I upgraded that, updated that to 80% now for Sunday and Monday. High temperatures Sunday, 37, 40 for Monday, 50% chance for rain on Tuesday, cloudy skies and 41 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast. Coming up next, tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Bob's Burgers and Brew in Wenatchee. Only the best. I'm Tom from Alpine Air Heating and Cooling. At Alpine Air, we think of ourselves as customer service oriented retailers. When you make an appointment, please visit our store, meet our people, see our shop. We are serious about heating and air conditioning. Carrier and Alpine Air are offering huge factory rebates and financing options for all your needs. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air. Call for your free replacement estimate. Heat and air, call Alpine Air, 662-6846. Bob's Burgers and Brew in Wenatchee, only the best. Where will you be a year from now? You could be working as a medical assistant. The Charter College Medical Assistant Certificate Program gets you work ready in 10 months. Add five more months to earn an associate degree. We prepare you with hands-on training and support you after graduation with job search help and interview skills. Institutionally accredited by the Accrediting Bureau of Health Education Schools, Charter has been training healthcare professionals for more than 30 years. Charter College, we work to get you to work. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Live Channel. And a happy hump day. The East Mont Wildcats hosted the Moses Lake Chiefs in a Big Nine wrestling match last night here on the NCW Life Channel. With nine varsity girls matches, the decision was made to wrestle the girls on one mat with the boys' varsity matches taking place on a second mat simultaneously. The result? A little confusing night for our broadcast team, but we got it for you. In the uh, girls' match, East Mont prevailed 24-18 with pins by Daniela Hernandez, Giselle Keene, Destiny Ross Ledbetter, and Reina Valdivinos, Moses Lake boys won the match on the boys' side in a landslide, 60-15 to the final. Only three Wildcats post victories with Adrian Vivanco and Cesar Sidio winning by pin. Max Prazer earned a 3-1 decision. I was Matt side with a play-by-play -play here on the NCW Live channel. Daniela Hernandez able to keep that head and arm and hold on for dear life. There's 25 seconds left in the round. Meanwhile, to the boys' match, and that was a quick one here as he spots victory the first of the night comes adrian vivanco able to get a pin with uh, just 55 seconds into the first round so the vivanco gives eastmont their first points of the night on a pin of sergio guzman at 145 pounds meanwhile over on the girls mat back to the red mat to the pin going to be whistled here for daniela hernandez for eastmont two-point takedown and the pin so he spot back-to-back pins on the mat on the girls' side. So Giselle Keen with a win in the first round by pin over Giselle Aparicio Cervantes at 130 pounds. Meanwhile, back to the boys' mat. And our blue mat here tonight, Cesar Sidio working against Carson Voss as it is a 2-0 match still with Sidio on top, both literally and in the match. Trying to work that arm barred back around. Got it? Now he'll work to bar it up, and then he'll reach in the other side and try to walk it around to try to get a uh, pin move here. He's now going to reach up, get that half Nelson, bring the wrestler back towards the mat with 35 seconds to go. Long time for Carson Voss to hang on here. The official moves in a better position so he can see, looking under, looking, looking to see if both shoulders are pinned to the mat. That's why they call it a pin. Sidio looking for a victory here in the first round, and he gets it by pin. Max will be down to start round two. 
at 195 pounds. Quickly gets to his feet. Hand fight going on. Then turns, gets the one-point escape. Tried it. Now the head and arm attempt. And who's going to get the advantage? Nobody. It'll be Prazier with a two-point takedown. Prazier's going to be careful here with 20 seconds left and a one-point escape. 17 seconds. Takedown will tie it for Ashley. Can't afford to stall Ken Prazer. Six seconds, five seconds left. With four, with three. And Max Prazer is going to hold on for the victory by a score of three to one over Everett Ashley at 195 pounds. So only three victories on the mat for Eastmont boys last night. They fall to Moses Lake by a final of 60 to 15. Also late score in, it was Eisenhower beating Wenatchee 44 to 30. The Wenatchee girls bowling team emerged from Eastmont lanes yesterday with a share of the Big Nine lead after a 63 pin win over previously unbeaten Eisenhower. Panthers outpaced the cadets in the first game 986 to 841. Ike came back to take the second 919 to 837. Wenatchee won the first Baker 171 to 163. The cadets won the second Baker 174 to 166. So it came down to a pin total count. Jeff Levitt tells us his high scores for the day were Kyla Hankins with a 255. Jessica Holbrook rolled a 201. Jaden Thompson had a 192 and Hannah Johnson a 185. Emily Groth a 179. Both teams sit atop the standings at 6-1. Boys basketball last night. A couple of games. Chelan was able to use a stingy defense to force turnovers and get transition buckets early and often against Cascade in a 67-34 victory. The Mountain Goats were led by the 21 points of Connor Wilson. At Waterville, the Shockers were no match for visiting Manson as the Trojans post at a 57-20 win. Looking at the Les Schwab prep scoreboard in girls basketball last night, Waterville Mansfield handled Manson 68-29. We have two local athletes who were selected by the WIAA as Athletes of the Week this week. Congratulations, Wenatchee senior captain Jessica Holbrook helped her team win the Tower Classic by averaging a 198 over three games in bowling. Meanwhile, Cashmere sophomore Mason Landek is also a WIAA Player of the Week. He scored 48, 47, and 29 points respectively in wins over Chelan, Omak, and Granger last week. Finally, Seahawks will have to play the rest of the season without linebacker Michael Kendricks. Seattle learned following Monday night's 21-7 win over Minnesota that Kendricks broke his tibia and will require surgery to fix the bone and the knee. Coach Pete Carroll says they placed him on the IR. That's sports. I'm Eric Grandstrom on the NCW Life Channel. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with your host, Dan Koontz. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night. The NCW Live Channel is your home for local news, local weather, and events including live local high school sports. Watch inspiring local shows featuring local people. Don't miss Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Let's Learn. Guada TV. Street Talk and Other Stuff. The 12th District. Life with Lisa. And the Arbiter of Stoke. NCW Life Channel is your local TV station. Everything we do is about delivering very high quality care and keeping our patients safe. We really work as a team here, and so that's really what makes it worthwhile. I give 100% every day, and I do that because I work for a company that I believe gives 100% back to me. The bottom line is we genuinely care about our employees. It is the most incredible place to work, and you will be inspired every day. Are you watching me? If you're watching me and you are a business owner in North Central Washington, your potential customers could be seeing your TV commercial right now. With Solely on Broadcasting, TV advertising is effective and affordable. Place your ads on the network best suited to your potential customers or get top of mind awareness with 16 cable networks, including NCW Life, your local TV channel. 
Give Soli on Broadcasting a call at 888-2020 today to see how easy and affordable it is to advertise on TV.